Transcribed. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents The Mysterious Traveler. Written, produced, and directed by Robert A. Arthur and David Cogan, and starring one of radio's foremost actors, James Stevens, in The Haunted Trailer. <laughs> This is the mysterious traveler inviting you to join me on another journey into the realm of the strange and the terrifying. I hope you will enjoy the trip, that it will thrill you a little and chill you a little. So settle back, get a good grip on your nerves, and be comfortable, if you can, as we take a little cross-country trip in the haunted trailer. Before we begin, I have a question for you. Do you believe in ghosts? No, that's good. Then my story won't bother you in the least. So let me introduce Melvin McGraw, as nice a young man as you'll ever meet in this world or the next. Melvin is very unhappy. He has a story he wants to get off his chest. All right, Melvin, tell us all about it. Uh, Maybe it'll... Buck up your spirits. Spirits. Don't mention that word to me. What I could tell you about spirits. In fact, I'm going to. You are now listening to a desperate man. And yet, just two months ago, I was sitting on top of the world. I was heading for California in my coupe, pulling a brand new trailer. In California, I had a girl waiting for me. Her name was Louise, and we were going to be married. We were going to take a two-weeks honeymoon trip in the trailer, then settle down in a little vine-covered cottage. But I haven't the heart to go into details. Just say that as I drove through the Catskills, I was happier than a lark. I'd made a late start, so I drove until well after dark. Then I found myself on an empty stretch of road in the mountains with a bad storm coming up. I didn't want to drive through a storm, so when I came to a tiny, dark railroad station, I pulled off the road beside it and made myself comfortable in my own trailer. In no time at all, I was asleep. But about midnight, a terrific clap of thunder woke me up. I sat up, bumped my head, and and blinked. The storm was raging outside, and the trailer door had blown open. It was banging back and forth. I got up to close it, but before I reached it, it shut itself firmly. I was about to get back into my bunk when somewhere in the darkness a voice spoke. Ah, now this is something like. It was an odd, unearthly sort of voice, and at first I thought I'd just imagined it. Then it spoke again. A house on wheels, furniture and everything. Some fun, eh, chum? They never had nothing like this when I was alive. Then I realized what must have happened. I'd left the radio on and I was hearing some late program. I reached over to click it off, but it was already off. Puzzled, I found the light switch and turned it. The trailer was empty, except for me. I was staring around in perplexity when... I heard it again, that strange voice. Over here, chum, in the easy chair. That's right. Now, can you see me? Can I see him? I rubbed my eyes, then rubbed them again. There was something white and misty sitting in my easy chair. Something that grew more and more solid as I stared at it, until I could see it quite plainly. Like looking at a disreputable old man carved out of a chunk of London fog. It was... Uh, the only thing it could be was... That's right, chum. I'm a ghost. My name is Spike Higgins. Pleased to meet you. What do you mean you're a ghost? There's no such thing as a ghost. Oh, no? Then listen to this. Oh! Did you 
to hear a more ghostly groan than that? Or maybe you'd like to hear a banshee scream. You like a chump? Every ghost can do it. And now I'll give you another demonstration. Where we call this one number three B, the fatal warning. Are you ready? It'll curl your head. Are you prepared to meet your fate? Beware. Beware. Stop. Stop. Why, well, I ain't even begun yet. I got a whole bag of ghostly tricks to try out. Why, well, it's years since I had a chance to use a single one of them. Hey, hey, what about some invisible footsteps, eh? Hey, you see, I, I can do that without even stirring from this chair. And, and then there's the hollow knock on the front door. I'll demonstrate that, too. There. And now the door creaks open. Now, listen. See? Now, now, just suppose you was alone in a deserted house at night and you heard all them noises. What would you do, huh? I'm asking you, chum. I'd, uh, I'd run like the dickens. Yeah, I bet you would. Anybody would. And now do you believe I'm a ghost? Or, or should I give you some more of my repertoire? Uh, no, 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 no. I'm, uh, I'm convinced. You're a ghost. Well, that's better. Now, now, now that we're acquainted, you can call me Spike. That's my name. Spike Higgins. Born March 28, 1888. Died April 15, 1930. Well done, now good and faithful saving. Oh, I certainly wish I could wake up. This dream I'm having is ghastly. Not ghastly, ghostly. And you're not asleep. Hey, but speaking of sleeping, it's after midnight, and this is the first time I've been near a bed in more than 20 years. What do you say we turn in, man? You mean... You're suggesting you're going to sleep in my trailer? Well, why not? That's what a trailer's for. A home away from home. No. I won't stand for it. Now, get out. Why did you ever come in here in the first place? Well, why did you stop in my territory? Answer me that, chum. Don't call me chum. My name is Melvin. Well, if my name was Melvin, I'd rather be called chum. Okay, Melvin, you invited me in. I did no such thing. I, I deny it. Well, you stopped beside my railroad station, didn't you? Well, what do you mean, your railroad station? That old station outside, I haunted. A haunted railroad station? I never heard of such a thing. Well, there's plenty you never heard of. Well, back in 1930, I was a bum, see? I rode the boxcars. Well, one night, I was trying to get away from a railroad bull. Toughest railroad dick in the business. Name of Dan Banshee. Well, I slipped off the top of a boxcar just as we was passing this station, see? Well, sir, I got appointed resident ghost for Seven Pine Station. A real lousy break. Hasn't been anybody in the station after dark for ten years. And then tonight you come along and park. Well, naturally, I invited myself in. Oh, that's some layout you got here. Well, why did you stay if you disliked it so? Had to. I was doomed never to leave. Punishment, you see. You were doomed to stay here forever? Like I said, never to leave. Why? I'll show you, Spike. This is where you and I part company. I know you think I was dreaming, but I wasn't. I was sitting there in my trailer talking to the ghost of a very disreputable looking hobo. And I saw that I had to take drastic action. Spike had said he was doomed to stay there forever, but I wasn't. I hurried out of my trailer, climbed into my coupe, started the motor, and pulled away from there. I didn't stop until I'd gone 20 miles and left Spike Higgins' ghost safely behind me. Then I found a spot off the road, stopped, and went back to my trailer, completely bushed. Oh, oh boy, now for some sleep. Oh, I'm dead. I, I watch your language, Melvin. I'm dead, not you. Spike. Here I am, Melvin, in the other bunk. No, you can't be. You said you were doomed to stay forever back at the railroad station. Well, I said I was forbidden to leave. I didn't leave. You hauled me away in your trailer. So now the curse is broken. I can go any place I want. Then go. A any place. I don't care where. A as long as it's someplace else. Oh, but I like it here, Melvin. Nice and cozy, good company, plenty of scenery. I'll tell you what I do. If looking at me bothers you, I'll merge. Then you won't be able to see me. Merge with what? Merge with the other way. It's a long jump. I mean, Melvin, it's a long... He was gone. Except for me, the trailer was empty. Then I knew it had just been a dream. 
I took a stiff drink of scotch and tumbled into my bunk. Next morning, the sun was shining. I thought about Louise and cheered up. I made myself a cup of coffee and started out happy as a lark again. I stayed happy almost all day. Then, as it was getting on towards evening, a cold, clammy draft chilled the back of my neck and... Hello, Melvin. It's me, your old chum, Spike. You're not my old chum. And, and where are you? I, I can't see. Well, give me time, Melvin. Give me time. I've been merged with the other wear all night. I can't materialize again too fast or I'll strain my protoplasm. Hey, how's that? You... You transparent monstrosity. I thought you were just a dream. Oh, have I got to convince you all over again? Okay, I'll run through my repertory for you. The ghostly groan, the dying scream, the scream of the banshee, the hollow footsteps, the squeaking door. No, 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 anything but that. I, I couldn't stand it again. Well, okay, then. Oh, but I left one out last night. The mournful howl of a dog. You know, in every ghost story, there's always a dog howling someplace. Well, well that ain't a real dog. That's just a standard ghost sound effect. Yeah, like, like this, see? <laughs> No, 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 no. My nerves can't stand anymore. No, Finn, Jum, you're gonna have to toughen up. You're gonna be hearing a lot of them ghostly noises, and you just gotta get used to them. What do you mean? Well, you and me are gonna be seeing a lot of each other. I am now the resident ghost of this here trailer. Congratulations, Melvin. You, you own the first haunted trailer. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Nobody ever heard of a haunted trailer. Well, they're gonna hear of this one. You'll be famous all over America. Oh, that's absurd. A, a haunted trailer. Why not a haunted ferry boat, a haunted boxcar, or, or a haunted pullman? What do you think there ain't? Why, why, there's a haunted ferry boat makes the crossing at 125th Street every stormy night. And then there's a haunted boxcar. Never gets where it's going. Palamine rides the name of Boxcar Benson. And, and, and speaking of trains, didn't you never hear the Phantom Express? The Phantom Express? Yeah, yeah, it's an all pullman car job. And, and nobody rides it but hobos who've been given a reward, see? It only travels by twilight, and it goes a thousand miles an hour. Always traveling, never stopping. That, that's heaven for us poor, restless hobos. Indeed. Yeah, so what's so funny about a haunted trailer? Now I ask you. Well, as I got underway again, I was worried. The idea of taking Louise for a honeymoon in a haunted trailer didn't appeal to me. I didn't think it would appeal to Louise either, especially since Spike Higgins seemed to be a ghost completely lacking in all delicate sensibilities. But I didn't have any idea what to do about it, not even the ghost of an idea. Presently, Spike oozed himself back into the trailer, and I kept on driving until almost 9 o'clock. Then I turned into a little motel and arranged to park overnight. I had some supper at a diner nearby and then went back to my trailer, hoping against hope that Spike would be gone. But he wasn't. The trailer was full of cigar smoke and the smell of whiskey. There was Spike sprawled out on my bunk, inhaling the smoke of a cigar that burned in the ashtray and from time to time leaning over to sniff at an open bottle of scotch. And to make it worse, Another phantasmal character, long and thin and disreputable looking, occupied the other buck. They were two thoroughly intoxicated spirits. Oh, many brave hearts lie asleep in the deep. So beware, beware. <laughs> Spike, what is the meaning of this? Oh, oh, hello, Melvin. Hey, Melvin, I want you to meet an old pal of mine, Nitro Nelson. Pleased to meet you, Melvin. I'd shake hands if I had any hands. Spike, I asked you a question. What is the meaning of this? Why, Melvin, we're just celebrating, that's all. I ain't seen Nitro for pretty near 25 years, so we're having a little fun. We're just a couple of high spirits. You got it? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Well, get this, this Nitro ghost out of here at once. This is my trailer, and I don't want him here. Yeah, sure, sure, Melvin. It's your trailer, only I'm the resident ghost, see? I got full rights to extend hospitality to any other ghost, ghoul, phantasm, spirit, spoke, boogeyman, werewolf, vampire, or poltergeist I want to. Look it up, the Spirit's Handbook, Section 7, Paragraph B. Be 
Besides, Melvin, there's a lot worse things uh, than me that Spike could have invited. You know, some of them werewolves now. Brother. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, let's not talk about it. Just thinking of such things makes me nervous. But you'll have to stop singing. Suppose somebody heard you and, and came to investigate. Oh, well, okay. And anyway, it's time to turn on the radio. Turn on the radio? For what? What to hear it, stupid. Uh, let's see, uh... Yeah, yeah, this ought to be the right station. May I ask, merely out of morbid curiosity, what program a ghost would listen to? Well, you don't have to ask, you'll hear it. This is a mysterious traveler, inviting you to join me on another journey into the realm of the strange and the terrifying. I hope you will enjoy the trip, that it will thrill you a little and chill you a little. So settle back, get a good grip on your nerves, and be comfortable if you can. Mysterious travel. Oh, that's a pipper of a program. Oh, no. No. Turn it off. What's the matter? You don't like the mysterious traveler? All us ghosts listen to him. Oh, I like it all right, but you don't expect me to listen to it with two ghosts right in the same room with me, do you? Sometimes he even scares us. Okay, we'll turn it off. Look, Spike. Yeah, Mel. What'll you take to go away and leave me alone, both of you? Oh, Melvin, Melvin, you don't understand. I've took up my abode in this here trailer. I'm your ghost now, your family ghost. Where thou ghost, I will ghost. You get it? <laughs> <laughs> then am I to understand you refuse to clear up? And the answer to that, Melvin, is absolutely. Well, in that case, I'm going to rent a cabin for the night. I couldn't possibly sleep in this trailer with you two hunks of animated fog. Suit yourself, Melvin. Anyway, me and Spike got some uh, practice in the dope. Okay, Spike, let's go. First, the mournful dog howl. That night, I slept in a rented cabin. The next morning, I drove on westward with my two phantom passengers and tried to pretend they weren't there. I almost got used to them. I suppose a man can get used to anything even to having a permanent cold chill running down his backbone. When we passed through Denver, Nitro Nelson dropped off, saying he wanted to haunt up some old pals of his, leaving me with Spike Higgins. Well, Melvin, it's just you and me together now, just the two of us. Uh, until you get married, that is, then there'll be the three of us. I don't think Louise is going to like that. Oh, sure she will. Anyway, I'm sticking around. I hate to think what Louise will say when I tell her about it. Hey, hey, where are we going on our honeymoon? The three of us, I mean. I figured on driving up to Oregon to see the mountains. Oh, that's good, that's good. Just as long as we get away from California. What have you got against California? Oh, just that Dan Basher lives there now. Dan Basher? Yeah, you remember that tough railroad dick who was chasing me when I fell off that freight? Oh, he's the toughest bull in the business. Hey, you're not afraid of him now, are you? No, oh, no, of course not. Oh, only the grapevine says he's kind of sick, see, and, and he might be entering the spirit world any time now. And I wouldn't want to run into him again if he did. He's got a grudge against me. Hey, hey, you know, I just thought of something. What? Well, right at first, right at first, Louise probably won't be able to see me or to hear me, see. I, I, on account of a family ghost that's only visible to the household, you get me? Yes, but I don't understand Well, as why. soon as you're married, she'll be part of the household, and then she can see me. Until then, No. Oh, uh, wake me up as soon as it gets dark, huh, chum? Three days ago, we reached Santa Monica. I rented parking space in an auto camp and immediately phoned Louise. Melvin, darling, I'm so glad you're here. I've been worried not hearing from you. Oh, I'll explain all about that. When can I come and see you? Well, I, I better come see you first, Melvin. You see, my uncle isn't well, and the doctor said he must have quiet. I'll be there in an hour. I hurried back to the trailer and tried to clean it up. 
Spike Higgins' ghost lay on a bunk and watched me cynically. Hey, take it easy, Melvin. You're no good at housework. You know, this place needs a woman's touch. Now, listen, you. You've got a promise not to frighten Louise. I told you, Melvin. She won't even know I'm here. Well, I certainly hope not. That would ruin everything. Here she comes now. Coming, darling. Melvin. Louise. Oh, here, let me help you in. <laughs> oh, thank you, Melvin. <laughs> so this is it. The trailer you wrote me about. Uh-huh, darling. Hey, look. Here's the stove, and an ice box, and a built-in bar. A bar? Uh-huh. Oh, now, Melvin, you know I disapprove of spirit. I resent that. Be quiet. Why, Melvin? Oh, excuse me, darling. I, I wasn't talking to you. Well, then who were you talking to? Oh, it's hard to explain. Look, Louise, here's a writing desk that folds into the wall, and a regular easy chair. Well, it's very nice, Melvin, but... All the same, we're not taking any spirits along on our honeymoon, bar or no bar. Oh, has she got a surprise coming to her? I said to be quiet. Melvin, how can you talk to me like that? Come on, show her who's boss, Melvin. I told you to shut up. Melvin, I won't stay here and be insulted. You can telephone me when you're ready to apologize. With that, Louise stormed out. That evening, I had to plead with her on the telephone for half an hour before she would consent to let me drive out and see her at her home. Oh, really, Melvin? You were very rude this afternoon. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I I'm overwrought. I apologize. Well, you do look rather haggard, Melvin. And, and the way your hair stands on end, you really should do something about it. I wish I could. Uh, Louise, uh, uh, how soon can we get married? Well, I don't know. It depends on Uncle Dan. Uncle Dan? Uncle Dan Basher, my mother's brother. He's very ill. The doctor just gives him a few more days. Your uncle is Dan Basher, who used to be a railroad detective? Why, yes. And he's dying? I'm afraid so, Melvin. But you needn't look so pleased about it. Oh, sorry, darling. Uh, look, I... I must talk to him uh, now. Oh, but the doctor said he can't. Just for be a minute, sick. darling. I, it's very important. Well, maybe just for a minute. Uh, come this way. This is his door. Uncle Dan. Yeah. Do you feel strong enough to talk? What about? Well, it's Melvin, my fiance. He wants to meet you. Uh, send him in. Come in, Melvin. Oh, thank you, Louise. Look, I, I must speak to your uncle in private. Oh, but Melvin... You... I'll explain later. That, that, that's a good but girl. Really, I, I <laughs> Th thank you, Louise. Good work. I can never get rid of her. What do you want to marry Louise for, anyway? Oh, I, I love her. It's a pretty poor excuse for getting married. She's like her mother, my sister. The reason I spent all my life on the railroad. Well, that's what I want to talk about, sir. Uh, do you remember a certain Spike Higgins... Do I remember him? If I could ever get my hands on him. Do you know him? I know his ghost. He's haunting my trailer. He is, huh? I'd certainly like to meet up with him. Oh, well, I'd certainly like you to. He's outside now. My trailer is parked at the curb. Well, in that case, I was figuring on postponing the event for a few days. But for the privilege of meeting up with Spike Higgins' ghost... Yes? Lab, go outside and wait. I'll be out in a couple of minutes. In the spirit. I made some excuse to Louise and hurried out to the trailer. Spike Higgins' ghost was lolling on my bunk. Oh, out so soon, Melvin? What's the matter? Oh, nothing, Spike. Nothing. Hey, you're up to something. What is it? Nothing, I tell you. Oh, relax, Spike. Relax. I got a funny feeling... Uh-oh, someone's coming. What do you mean, someone? Another spook. He's coming in here. Hello, Spike. Dan Bess. In the spirit, Spike. I've been waiting for this meeting for a long time. Oh, no, Melvin, you double cross. After him. Qu quick, Mr. Basher. Right, you are, lad. I rushed outside. 
Three blocks away, I saw a long freight train puffing away. Spike Higgins' ghost was racing for it with Dan Basher's spirit gaining on him. For the first time in a week, I felt happy again. <laughs> Melvin. Oh. Oh, Louise. Melvin. Uh, Uncle Dan. Uh, He's gone. Yes, I know he is. You know? <laughs> well, what do you mean? Well, I just saw him running for that freight train. You saw Uncle Dan running for a freight train? Oh, I certainly did. <laughs> Wonderful fellow, your uncle. Well, Melvin, are, are you mad? Mad? N not a bit. I am as happy as a lark. Well, you must be out of your mind. Your poor Uncle Dan has... Oh, Melvin, and you just stand there laughing about it. Laughing! But, but, but Louise, you, you don't understand. <laughs> oh, I understand all too well. You want to break our engagement. Hi, you, Melvin. <laughs> So you want to get rid of me, do you? I certainly do. There, I knew it. I just knew it. Louise, darling. Oh, just like a dame. Always weep. Will you shut up? Isn't there any way to get rid of you? Well, there certainly is. Goodbye, Melvin McGraw, forever. Louise. Oh, never mind, Melvin. You've always got me. Well, that's my story. I'm a desperate man. Louise sent me back my ring, and I'm stuck with Spike Higgins' ghost. I should have known he'd outsmart Dan Basher. He left Dan's spirit hunting the freight train for him and came straight back to me. Now I'll never get rid of him. I'm just a shadow of my former self. I, I can't get a job. Oh, look. Do any of the radio stations carrying my story need a good sound effects man for mystery programs? Oh, with me and Spike Higgins' ghost working together, we can guarantee authentic effects. Here, look. We'll give you a demonstration. Spike, let's have the creaking door. Now, the fatal warning. Are you prepared to meet your maker? Now, the dog howling in a cemetery. Mysterious traveler again. Dear me, what an odd story Meldrin had to tell. Really, I don't know whether to take it seriously or not. A haunted trail. It would be just the thing for my summer vacation. I do know a haunted telephone booth where I make all my calls. Oh, but I'm just joking. There are no such things as ghosts. Are there, Spike? Oh, of course there ain't. Well, the whole idea is ridiculous. You see? Oh, you have to get off here? I'm sorry. But I'm sure we'll meet again. I take this same train every week at this same time. You have just heard The Mysterious Traveler. And now you can also enjoy other tense and dramatic stories of The Mysterious Traveler in the June issue of The Mysterious Traveler magazine. In our cast were James Stevens, Larry Haynes, Bill Zuggert, and Shirley Blank, with Maurice Tarplin starred in the title role. Music is under the direction of Emerson Buckley and was composed by Richard DuPage. This program came from New York. <laughs> The dramatized stories of crime and the events leading up to the capture of the perpetrator are the order of the day on True Detective Mysteries. These stories are based on actual police file cases and have an air of authenticity seldom captured by a crime program. So, for the best in mystery listening, make a date to tune in True Detective Mysteries every Sunday over most of these stations. This program was transcribed especially for presentation to the West Coast audience at this hour. Listen again next week at this same time for Mysterious Traveler. And stay tuned now for Let George Do It, heard over most of these same stations. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>